Hi, and welcome to tutorial number two in the free 3D Blender tutorials made possible by the Wayland Free Public Library. My name is Eric Carlson, and we'll be building off of what we did last time with building a basic house. So last time we had a house that looked like this, and we learned some of the basics of moving around Blender and some of the basic tools. And this time, we're going to expand on that a little bit and make a house more like this. So. We'll take our loop cut and slide tool, our extrude tool, um, maybe use a couple other tools and, you know, just keep adding a little bit more detail to our house to make it a little more interesting. So let's get started. And if you have um, questions about moving around, I would refer to the last tutorial and also in, you know, getting up and running in Blender and all that. So anyway, so here's our new scene. This is what you'll see when you open Blender. So first we will go to uh, select and deselect all and then once more select all and then delete key enter to delete now let's add in a new cube and of course the cube is already there to start with but this just kind of gets us uh, oriented into blender and shows you how to add other shapes if you want to experiment with other shapes in the future so uh, we'll start by rebuilding the basics of what we had last time so go into edit mode and go to loop cut and slide and we'll make a cut and then and that was with left click there and then we'll do right click to place it just like we learned last time and now we'll go down to edge select right click on the top edge and left click on that arrow to drag it up a little bit to make our roof and now we'll go down like last time and bring up the floor so left click on that right click shift right click so you're selecting both and then left click to bring it up a little bit. So that'll give us a kind of stubbier house, which I am a fan of. So we've done that. Now we'll go and add our chimney. Now this time we're gonna build a chimney on this ridge in the middle of the roof, which will be a little bit more interesting. And will also let us use the scale tool a little bit. So we'll go to loop cut and slide, drag it so that you have it like this, perpendicular to the top ridge, left click. And then here we'll left click to place it over toward this side. Okay, and now we will left click on loop cut and slide again, left click, left click about here, and you know you can change the shape of the roof as you see fit. Okay, loop cut and slide again, and this time we'll want to make an edge like this, so find a spot where you get that edge, then left click, reposition, left click, okay, so far so good. And left click again, loop cut and slide, left click, and left click up here. Good, so there's the boundaries of our roof. So we're going to take these two faces and lift them up. So to do that, we'll left click on face select, right click, shift, right click, and then extrude region, so it extrudes these together. And it'll automatically already be going in the Z axis, up and down. So raise it to a certain height, then left click. And now we want to flatten this out. So what we're going to do, this will be a couple key commands, is we'll hit the S key. And once we do that, you'll see we start, as we move the mouse around, it'll start to scale. So we've hit that. Now we'll hit Z to snap it to the Z axis. And now to get it to be a perfectly um, level scale, all the way down to 0%, we will hit 0 on the numpad. Or if you don't have a numpad, you would hit 0 in the top row, and you would have been able to uh, keypad option which I discussed in the last tutorial. So we hit 0 on the numpad and now we hit enter. And there it is. Now we have a perfectly flat top of our chimney. Okay, so we're going to add some more detail to that a little bit later, so we'll leave it for now. So this is basically where we were at last time with the exception that this chimney is now on the ridge, so it's a kind of more interesting shape. So let's start by making uh, a window. So we'll go to loop cut and slide, left click, left click here. This will be making the top ridge of the window. And so we'll left click right around here and now we want to make that a flat edge. You'll see that it kind of approximates between that and that. So it's flat down here but pointed up there. So this is pretty close to as pointy as that part is. So we want it to be totally flat. So we'll, using the same tool that we used for the chimney, we'll hit S and then Z. Now we're in the Z axis. And then 0 on the numpad. Oh, you know what? We're a little bit high there. Well, that's okay. So we've hit zero, then we hit enter, 
and now left click on the blue arrow, drag it back down, because that's obviously a problem like that. But this is fine. Okay, and then move it pretty close to the top there. All right, so now let's make, that'll be the top edge of our window, so let's make the bottom edge. So we'll do loop, cut, and slide again. And now you'll see this is totally flat because it's in between two flat edges. So left click, and let's go down a little ways, maybe about there. Okay, and now uh, let's reuse a couple of these edges instead of making new cuts, just to keep it simpler. So we're already in edge select mode, so we're going to right click on this edge, and then left click on the red arrow and drag it out just a little bit. It actually doesn't need to get too much wider. And then left click on this guy and move that a little bit. So there's the shape of our window. So then we will left click on the face select, and then right click, shift, right click, and we're going to extrude region and go in just a tiny little bit. Um, the reason why we don't want to go in really far is because partly I want to consider how this might be printed eventually if we were to use a 3D printer. So if you were printing this, you can't have it go in too far because then the roof up here, oops, uh, control Z to undo, um, the roof up here would not be supported. So as it starts to print, it would start to kind of come down in the middle there. So let me do that once more. So let's just go in a little bit, just to get the sense of a window without making a big space that it won't be able to support. Okay, so left click there, good. So there's a basic window, and that should be fine on the printer. And you might need to you know, do some tests with this just to see how far in you can go, but in general you don't want too much unsupported uh, 90 degree angles in your model. Uh, okay, so... Now we will go to uh, loop, cut, and slide, left click there, move over here, left click, and we're going to make a couple shutters. So we'll left click there, left click here, go over, left click, good. And then we will go select these two faces. So go to face select, left click on that, then right click, shift, right click and extrude. Either one of these will do because they're already separate so it'll automatically be individual or region. So move it out just a little bit. Good. Left click. So again, not too far out but just enough to get a bit of a sense of the of the shape of it. Okay, uh, next step. Let's, uh, let's add a front door. And we're actually going to add some steps too which will be kind of fun. So we'll go to the loop cut and slide. Left click. Actually, you know what? I take that back. So hit escape, if you already did that. Um, we're actually going to reuse this edge here. So left click on that, right click there, and actually, so right click there, and then shift right click to select this. Now we're making the most out of our edges we already have. So we didn't need to make a new edge because we can just slide this one over. So slide over a little bit, and then we'll take this edge here, right click and slide down. Okay. And that'll be the shape of our door right there. So we'll left click on this, face select, right click here, extrude, go in just a little bit. Good, left click. Okay, now we'll make our steps from this. So we'll start by moving the whole piece all as one before we do more cuts. It'll just kind of make it easier on us for selecting. So extrude, pull it out, left click. Okay, and now we'll add a cut here to start getting some steps. So loop, cut, and slide, left click, and then move up about there, left click, and then left click and face select, right click here, extrude region, good. Okay, so you can kind of see this pattern we're, we're using here. And left click, drag that out a little bit. Okay, and we'll do that once more. And then here I'll do right click just so it's perfectly centered. Then I'll place it right in the middle. Okay, left click on this, right click. And great, so now we have some steps. Okay, now the next step we'll make a garage. So right click here and then shift right click. I just want to go through and select all of these. And there are some other select tools you can use to make this a little bit quicker. Um, but we won't get into that now, just to keep this fairly simple. Uh, but if you wanted to explore those on your own, you go to Select, and then we have Circle Select and Border Select. So those are two other ways of selecting groups of faces. Okay, now we will go to Extrude Region, 
and just drag it out, it'll automatically be in our Y axis. So that's good. Right click. Great. Maybe even a little bit further. Okay, and now let's make a door shape here. So we'll use our loop cut and slide a few times to get that. So we're just left clicking for all of these. Good. And one more up here. And then this can just come right down to the ground. But what we are going to do is make one more cut here. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Just make that come in just a little bit. Okay. And now we will go to face select, right click, shift, right click through all these. Oops, not that guy. So I shift right clicked again to take it out of the group. Okay, now we'll extrude the region. And we'll go in so that orange line at the bottom matches up mostly with that darker line. Good. Okay, now we're going to right click here, delete key, delete face, and then once more, just to get rid of those. So now we have that nice opening there. And the reason why we did that extra cut there is also so that this can be connected. So if we go in close, we do still have two points. They're very close there, so you can't really quite see it right now. But uh, we're going to want to select those. So we'll go to vertices, select. And be actually, because they're so close, I am going to introduce one of these select tools just so we can select both, because it'll be hard to click on each of them, because they're basically on top of one another. So we'll go to select. Uh, border select and then basically just click and drag a little square around there and you see how it changed so we now have two highlighted and now let's see I'll make that a little bit bigger there we're gonna merge those so merge at center we'll say and so it might offset that line just slightly but it'll still be quite straight so it's good okay now we'll do the same on the other side so the reason why we're merging this is that everything is connected. So if I were to select this with my right click and then drag around, you see how there's these aren't stitched together. So we wanted it to be totally solid, especially if we're going to consider printing this. Um, but also it's just a good practice in general. So select, border select again, left click, drag around. Now you have both. Merge at center. Great. Okay, one final step, the chimney. We're going to make this chimney a little bit more interesting and I'll show you something really quick uh, so what I did for this is I grabbed an image on Google and it's often good to get reference images to get some ideas and I just saw what sorts of elements of a house we could look at and so for the chimney you see how it has this kind of nice uh, ridge here that's sort of extruded outward so we're gonna do that just to make it look a little bit nicer and really most of 3d modeling is about you know making starting with very basic shapes like a cube and then it's continuing to chisel away and refine and just expand on that and just keep adding details. So we're just going to do a little bit, little bit of that with the chimney. So we'll go to loop cut and slide and then left click here. This will be our bottom edge. And so like with um, this edge for the windows, we want to flatten that. So S0 on the numpad. Oops, sorry, that's my bad. Hit escape out of that. S and then Z, so we're snapping to the Z axis. Otherwise, it would just scale it down to nothing in all the directions like we saw there. Then we hit zero on the numpad and then enter. Good. And let's move that up a little bit. Okay, and then loop cut and slide to get one more cut here. Great. Now we will select our faces. So to do this, we'll do, be right clicking, then holding down shift the whole time. And then you can let go of shift when you're moving, but then just be sure to hold down shift again when you right click. So we're basically just going and selecting all of these faces. Good. Now we'll hit S once, and now it's all scaling together. So go out just a little bit. It's a little bit tricky to get. Um, huh, I'm not sure why it's giving me that weird shape. Let's undo, Control Z. There we go. Okay. So if you ever have a problem, just you know undo and step back. Okay, so there we have our outer ridge. Now let's just make a little hole in the chimney. So right click, shift, right click, and then extrude region so it's all together. And then actually just uh, right click and then hit S and that'll scale it down there. So we'll make a bit of a border there and then left click and then extrude region once more and drag it down as much or as little as you want. I'm just going to go a little bit just to 
you know, so that at most angles it looks like it just goes down forever, but we don't really need to do that in this model. So there it is. So we'll back out and then go into object mode and we can uh, deselect just to make it a little bit easier to see. And there is the house. So we added a lot of nice little features here and, uh, and there might be another tutorial covering a couple more topics, uh, but for now hopefully this gives you some stuff to play with. So thanks for joining us again and uh, enjoy Blender.